Victoria, Australia. He also had completed short course on live feed for aquaculture and seaweed cultivation and utilization from Belgium and China respectively. He had a lot of work experience. Before move to Australia, he had two previous working experience. The first previous year during 1988 to 1992, he worked at the Marine Station on Bangladesh Fishery Research Institute as a marine scientist. And during 1992 to 1997, he worked as a head of the discipline at the Kulna University, Bangladesh. And Dr. Sadikun Awal is also a lecturer and faculty member at the faculty at the Mel Melbourne Polytechnic Victoria, Australia since 2006. And about research experience, he research interest in aquaculture and fishery as well as environmental management and restoration. The four his research interests are varied in different areas related to aquaculture uh, are, uh, research such as algae product and technology, reclamation on unproductive selling solid or land to productive ones, and many more. And also, he also contributed to make government policy related to coastal marine management and policy, uh, policy of uh, many more about the aquaculture impact, aquatic system, and many more. And Dr. A Sadikun Awa has a significant contribution in aquaculture, microalgae, ecological, and environmental research, which has been uh, seen uh, through a number of many publica publications uh, that uh, he has an, a peer review international professional journal. He also a famous writer in the Bengal, Bengali language, and also he has given numerous invite talk and tutorial nationally, nationally and internationally. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next information related to the role of this agenda for the lecture. In order to run this general lecture smoothly, Please, all participants mute the speaker for 30 to 40 minutes during the speaker presentation. We hope all of participants will stay until the end of the discussion session. <clears throat> there is, if there is any question during presentation, all participants will be allowed to type a question at the room chat or press the button. Uh, of the rest hand uh, discuss uh, and uh, we are uh, we have I'm sorry we will have delivery the question and also uh, communicate with the speaker. We have thirty minutes for discussion and the organizing committee and I will assess you to deliver question from all of participants in this discussion forum. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will ready to begin this uh, general lecture. Dr. Sadikun Awal, you have 30 to 40 minutes uh, for presentation, your talk. Time is your Dr. Sadikun Awal. Okay, nice, thank you. Uh, can I share my screen now? Okay. Yes, please. So can you all share, uh, see my screen? Yes, <clears throat> very clear. Thank you. Could you? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. As yes, uh, okay. she has mentioned, uh, I've been working in Australia a long time, and before that, I have worked in many countries, especially. Uh, aquaculture, fisheries, marine biology, environment, and uh, some other things. <clears throat> so today I'll give you a lecture on microalgae, microalgae that especially uses of microalgae 
in annual feed and a nutraceutical products. You can see this is algae. In our kids, if, if they see it, they'll say, oh, yucky. You know, if they see this is calm on top of the water or on the slippery road, they'll say, oh, yucky. So algae never got good impression. Whenever people, you know, when the people walk uh, along the uh, mud area, uh, muddy roads, they sometimes get uh, you know, sleep talk. So algae not, uh, uh, you know, have not received any good impression from, uh, from us, from human beings. But algae has done everything. The world, the planet who, where we have been living now, that's because of algae. The power, the fuel you've been using for motor cars, for industry, for uh, rocket science, everything. <clears throat> uh, so the, you know that uh, when this planet is started, it was just like this, volcanic eruption, volcanic rock, lava everywhere. And it took millions of years to come to this. this. Anyway, uh, that I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a geologist. But I just wanted to give you some uh, glorious contribution of, of algae for our planet, for this civilization. I'll mainly focus on uses of microalgae. As I said before, in animal feed and nutraceutical. Why animal feed and why nutraceutical products? Because we know, many of us, we know importance of algae, you know, there are so many uses of algae, but these two mainly uh, new areas, potential areas. For aquaculture, algae have been using a long time. If you want to grow fish or crustacean or uh, shellfish, mollusk, bivalve, without algae, you can't do anything. <clears throat> uh, sorry, uh, well, you know, so fish, you can use algae directly for aquaculture, especially for fin fish. Like some of the uh, fingerling, they eat uh, algae. But for fish, it's not directly we can use it because we need to feed zooplankton like rotifer, artemia, then we can feed zooplankton uh, to, uh, to uh, fin fish. But Shrimp industries, whatever we call shrimp, you know, in Australia, it is known as prawn. So there is a big kind of, uh, dispute about prawn and shrimp. Just to make a difference, if you delineate it in the definition uh, between shrimp and prawn, but to us, it doesn't matter. We know it is crustacean, that is important. All we know, whatever it is, prawn or uh, shrimp, or that crustacean. So for shrimp, uh, larval development, if you want to grow shrimp, prawn or crustacean, you can't do without uh, uh, algae. It must, you must require uh, algae because at the larval stage, they don't eat. You can give them very, uh, you know, very, very attractive, very uh, lucrative food, but they wouldn't eat. They eat. It's initially still the feed on microalgae. So this prawn or shrimp in three different stages, like larval stages, uh, juvenile stages, stages and, uh, and uh, uh, adult stages, their mode of feeding different. Initially, for uh, you know, uh, larval stages, they are plankton feeder, zooplankton, phytoplankton feeder. They more uh, change their feeding habit to zooplankton and then uh, benthic uh, feeding. Sorry, I'm just requesting uh, to the moderator, please. Before I finish, at least five minutes before give me a warning because when I start talking, I can't stop. Anyway, so please just give me 
uh, warning five minutes before I finish the title for 40 minutes, 30, but that is my request. Anyway. Okay, I will. Thank you. So why, why we need to feed algae? Because it has got DHA, EPA, uh, arachne, uh, arachnidonic acid, and many other acids. You know that what DHA, all these are essential fats, omega-3 fatty acids. Many of us now use omega-3 fatty acid, omega-6 fatty acid, even omega-9 fatty acid you know, for uh, our uh, marketing purpose. But many of us, especially that manufacturer, you know, they put very nice trade name. Even milk, they said omega-3 omega fatty acid rich. Egg, they say omega-3 fatty acid rich. Fruits, they say omega-3 fatty acid rich. You know, everything omega-3, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid. But that many people, they don't understand that meaning of omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 fatty acids. So prawn, it has got uh, prawn larvae, they need high amount of essential fatty acid. Whatever we say omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, that was an uh, essential fatty acid, especially, uh, uh, you know, DHA, EPA, uh, all this kind of fat is it that is essential why that essential because our body cannot synthesize them. we need for our development for our brain development for our uh, you know uh, for our uh, immunity for so many things i'll i'll give you a few more example of all these fat is it why they are so important many mollusks if you want to grow mollusks whether it is oyster bivalve uh, mussels scallops whatever it is, you must need uh, mollusk. You must need, sorry, you must need algae because those uh, uh, mollusk larvae, they will eat, they'll survive completely on mollusks. Uh, they live, uh, sorry, they live completely on those algae. And again, why? Because they are very, if you give them algae, you know, especially, just remember, <clears throat> larvae, whatever I said, prawn larvae, or shrimp larvae, or uh, mollusk larvae, they are very tiny little, uh, you know, uh, animal. So, and think about that mouth. It's, it's smaller than a dog. So, why they, so if you give them food, they will not eat, because they are known as selective feeder feeder. Selective feeder. So they prefer all this kind of algae. Why they prefer all this kind of algae? Because they, in nature, they know they're very uh, rich in nutrients. So if you want to grow uh, mollusk, we have to feed them with uh, algae, especially, uh, I'm not sure whether, any, anyway, especially tetracelmines, isocrisis, uh, ketocerous calcitrant. If you have mollusk, you must have these three, four, five uh, types of uh, types of different types of algae. Animal feed. Uh, so th that's that's uh, I discussed shortly about uh, uses of algae in aquaculture. Aquaculture means both fin fish and shellfish. Shellfish means crustacean and mollusk. Animal feed. Uh, animal feed. So, truly speaking, one day the animal feed will be much more expensive than human because raw materials, ingredients for animal feed are actually decreasing day by day by day by day. So one day, animal feed will be more expensive than uh, human feed because we are destroying all the raw materials. So, what could be the uh, you know solution? We can use microalgae as a supplement, a raw ingredient. Why it has got he you know good number of uh, amino acid, lipid, carbohydrate, uh, fatty acids. Just think about a blue whale. 
blue whales, such a you know, world's most biggest animal. They have protein in their body, they have lipid in their body, they live in Arctic, they live in Antarctic, and such a cold condition, but they don't feel cold because their body system keep them warm. But they exclusively feed on micro, uh, microorganism which reach in uh, highly saturated, uh, highly unsaturated fatty acid, polyunsaturated fatty acid, which you can find only in the algae. So these are the species, uh, Chlorella, Anthrosporia, Hematococcus pluvialis, Dunaliella, Nanochlorosis, Pavlova, all these have been already using it uh, as the substitute of animal feed. In the cow, oh my God, see, as I said, it has been shown, as I said, it has been shown that if you add algal component into the cow feed, their milk already rich, will be rich in omega-3 fatty acid. Why we need omega-3 fatty acid or omega-6 uh, fatty acid? Just remember omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid, they're actually family of fatty acids, not one fatty acid, series of fatty acids. You know, uh, Human being, the civilization, when you may, human being evolved in, uh, on this planet, say uh, 5,000 years before, uh, uh, 10,000 years before, what do you think? People that time was very clever, sharp, intelligent, no. People now more clever, intelligent, sharp. Because this is the evolution. And eating evolution. Initially, the, our earlier ancestor used to live on plant, but when they started eating uh, animal, especially uh, red meat, they started developing their uh, brain cell. Anyway, that's another uh, area. Sorry, <clears throat> it's, it's smarter than me. It's uh, you know changing automatically. Uh, microalgae in uh, the sheep lamb, we can use microalgae, speed, especially spirulina, dinaliella, and other, uh, other uh, algae in uh, uh, this animal, especially lamb, sheep, uh, sheep and goats. Poultry, this is not only this is not only in theory. This has been practicing in many part of the world, but it's still not uh, popularly popularly commercialized because still people have not uh, you know right perception about use of uh, microalgae. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, so in the, in in the poultry. We can use, you know, one good thing. Sometimes, you know, poultry eggs, uh, sorry, farmed uh, chicken eggs and wild chicken eggs, the egg yolk look different, which is, of course, has big, uh, you know, customer perception. Why farmed egg has got, uh, you know, egg, is, uh, egg yolk is a bit pale colored? because not enough protein. If we feed uh, poultry, chicken with uh, algae mix, uh, feed their egg yolk will be more brighter color because uh, that I'll, I'll show you later, I'll tell you later because algae has got huge natural carotene. Egg yolk looks uh, orange color or look not orange color because of presence or absence of uh, carotene. Wild, wild uh, poultry, wild chicken, they actually, you know, when they, uh, you know, uh, free range one, they eat grasses, some kind of uh, green vegetables, which is rich in carotene. So, uh, protein, uh, uh, you know, uh, protein and lipid as well as uh, carotene could be added into the poultry feed if we use uh, ingredient. Normally, so
so all these are all these sorry all these are actually uh, you know uh, i'm talking about use of uh, algae in the animal feeds <clears throat> there are some other uses animal here normally discussed uh, fish bovine ovine and poultry but we can use for pig we can use for uh, other other uh, you know uh, domestic animals like uh, ducks so we can use uh, algae this is another huge multi billion dollar industry coming and it has already started uh, globally use of algae as nutraceuticals especially for health supplements and so far, you know, for this industry, we've been using Spirulina, Chlorella, Dunaliella saline, Hematococcus pluvialis. There are some other algae, but this food mainly, uh, you know, uh, popularly used uh, worldwide, especially. I'm, now I am talking about nutraceutical application, means uh, health uh, use for our uh, health supplements. As you can see, this is uh, spider guider, and you know this is this looks so, you know, uh, the image. If you look under microscope, they are uh, morphological appearances, so nice. You could use as you know ornamental ornamental scenery scenery scene in your uh, in your uh, you know wall as well. Anyway, so spirulina, spirulina. As you can see, why they use spirulina? Spirulina contains about uh, 60 to 70 percent protein. Just I uh, remind all of you, whatever, whenever we are saying, saying this approximate composition, this is in terms of dry out. They are rich in vitamin B, glycosamine, chlorophyll, vitamin E, omega 6, and there are many other lipids. They have essential amino acids. They have fatty acid, uh, you know, they have a fiber as well. And they've been using uh, traditionally and now more, uh, you know, with a modern technology using for weight loss, diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. And it has been documented that they can, they have got some uh, antiviral and uh, anti cancer properties. This is all. A huge research going on, uh, you know, worldwide on their, uh, you know, uh, nutraceuticals properties, their uh, uh, effect uh, on our health. So that huge research going on all around the world. Chlorella, chlorella is a very, you know, a robust algae, and do you know that this chlorella, chlorella been using for more than hundred years. There is a company, I think they established in 19, before 1950 in Japan. They used to call it Chlorella Institute. And, and long time before, astronaut, astronauts, they, uh, you know, space uh, travelers, they used to take chlorella with them in the rocket because uh, they, this chlorella used to absorb their fecal product. Anyway, and you can see uh, it contains 11 to 58% protein, 12 to 28% carbohydrate, up to 46% lipid in dry. Just remember, whenever you see this range, 11 to 58%, sometimes you think, why this so big then? Just remember, why we, we can't exactly say it has a 50% protein because that uh, nutrient profile depends on the local habitat or uh, water that it's been living. So that was always the approximate com composition we'll see as, the, as a range, not any fixed uh, figure. So it has got uh, beta carotene and so many different types of uh, uh, vitamin like uh, thiamine, leoflavine, vitamin B, vitamin 12, and so many things. That's why it's been recommended uh, as a very good uh, uh, health supplement, especially in many Western world, it's been, uh, it's been recommended 
<clears throat> as health supplement for pregnant women. Both Spirulina and Chlorella have been uh, recommended for all people, but especially for pregnant women. There are some reasons. So this is, as you can see, this is the Chlorella. They are very nice nice and uh, robust and very bright in color as you can see here and it has got double cell wall as you can see cell wall so nice and circular this cell wall actually give huge fiber in their in the dietary supplement and it has got all other things inside right? so for for uh, <clears throat> supplementary fiber the chlorella excellent Dunaliella, this is my favorite. You know, even I am uh, planning to write a book on the basis of this uh, Dunaliella because it can it it live from it can survive in from uh, five PPT saline to four, fifty PPT saline. It can change. It can provide wide range of saline. So this is becoming very popular for these pigment, this uh, product, beta carotene. This is natural beta carotene. You know why salmon fish look pink color? Because of beta carotene. You know, if you want to make your meat, meat product, meat, uh, beef meat or lamb meat or goat meat, more, you know, fresh, more uh, reddish in color, feed your animal just before slaughtering, feed your animal, uh, engage with this beta carotene food. You don't have to, sorry to say, many areas, the many areas for uh, in the meat industry, especially in the retail shop, to look it more fresh, look it more uh, bright color, they add sulfur dioxide. If you add, if, if they add sulfur dioxide with meat, raw meat, it will look Fresh color, as if it had been slaughtered process now, but this is this been happening over many many uh, developed countries. It's been happening, especially in a many uh, butcher shop or meat processing retail shop. They add sulfur dioxide chemical just to look it more fresh. But you don't have to. But such a nice natural thing. Why should we add chemicals? <clears throat> And this beta carotene, uh, you know, it 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 uh, prevent cancer of various organs like lung, pancreas, colon, breast, prostate, ovary. You think about this way. Instead of beta carotene, it is sulfur dioxide. What happened? Eventually, maybe one day our lung, our kidney, our uh, internal gut will be collapsed. What will happen to our young generation? Think about this. Anyway, so that is my another area uh, where I have been doing research. I'm trying to write a book on take up kids. We're all talking about sustainability. But in reality, what we are doing for our future generation. Anyway, sorry, Hematococcus pluvialis. This is another amazing, amazing. It has got astaxanthin, you see, such a nice color. What do you want to do with this astaxanthin? That's up to you. You can eat, you can use in food additives, you can use in uh, cosmetics, you can use for the extraction of uh, many other chemical compounds. Not only that, it has got, it is very, it, 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 it has got anti-inflammatory uh, properties. It has got anti-cancer properties. It has got cardio, it can prevent cardiovascular disease. All these are natural, uh, na natural uh, pigment belongs in the algae, which normally grow in, uh, you know, in inundated ponds or, you know, in a, in a inundated or a derelict pond, uh, wetland. Sometimes you say, oh, yucky, this is a scum. We are, there are so many uses of estrogen. I have just given you a summary here. Mm -hmm. Antioxidant. You don't have to drink five, six, seven, or ten, ten, 
15 cups of you know uh, green tea or just simple roti if you just drink uh, you know uh, or take one uh, astrazeneca capsule will be enough for the whole day uh, antioxidant it prevent diabetes uh, cardiovascular diseases and it has got anti inflammatory uh, you know component uh, effect on nervous system uh, it has got uh, anti cancerous component uh, immunomodulatory it has got immunomodulatory uh, effect uh, <clears throat> okay that that uh, we said about that we said about uh, that is what I said. Oh, use of estrogen. Now, another one, use of microalgae in cosmetic and beauty products. You know now, cosmetic industry lies Gucci, a Louboutin. They are investing huge amount of money in the algal research for the, uh, beauty products. So this beauty product, beauty product from algae, it has got all this natural, no chemical, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant activity, acting as stabilizing. You know, the many celebrities, they use formulated uh, beauty products. As you know, they have, uh, you know, uh, companies only uh, prepared those beauty products only for them. But, you know, and they're very expensive. Lou Vuitton, uh, they have, I think, developed a, a, you know, face cream, which is mainly composed of algae, uh, one particular type of algae. And that's not available in market. That is only for uh, those selected people. But if you know the idea, if you know, if you know it's a property, you can make it at home. We don't have to use different type of mask, face mask. Just use uh, algal face mask. You don't have to do much research. Just grow. I'll, I'll show you how you can do. grow algae in a uh, you know, small plastic uh, uh, Coke bottle, plastic bottle. Grow there. Just uh, uh, you know, pass through the filtration, uh, filter paper or some kind of seed. Use from them and add a few drops of olive oil and put uh, on your face as a mask. So that is, you don't have to use any chemicals. So, as I said, I'll give you two examples of uh, algae. Single species, even they're tinier than a dot. So it's more microscopic, uh, 20 to 30 microns. So tiny. So that single species, it has got multi-dimensional uses. So I'm giving, this is just remember, this is just I'm giving you as example. Uh, Hematococcus pluvialis, they are green algae. You know, there are eight group of algae. Uh, cyanophysi, chlorophysi, crypto, uh, chrysophysi, bacillariophysi, rhodophysi, pheophysi. There are eight uh, in in uh, algae. We call it division, but some people call it phylum. But for uh, animal kingdom, we call phylum same thing. Phylum for animal kingdom, division for uh, uh, algal uh, for uh, uh, plant, uh, same thing. So they belong to uh, chlorophyta. Chloro means chloroplast, means they're greener. But time to time, they turn from green to red. That is the amazing part for me. That is the order chlorophyta. Under this order, this division, all are greener. And uh, the genus uh, Hematococcus. Uh, and species pluvialis. It is available everywhere, especially in uh, freshwater algae like pools, tanks, uh, wetland, and any inundated. You can find it. 
whatever the algae is, initially they look green color. But, but for initially they look green color, but when a uh, temperature is highly stressed, or when uh, the situation is highly stressed, uh, they look uh, they turn they look a red color. Why? This green pigmentation, green pigmentation, chlorophyll turn into another uh, pigmentation. So. In their phases, we can see it for different, all the same algae, but they have got <clears throat> polymorphism. What polymorphism? Cellular polymorphism. What cellular polymorphism? Like, uh, uh, you know, cell shows different form, poly form, many form. Same cell shows many form, which is cellular polymorphism. So macrozoids, uh, uh, palmyloids, hematocysts, uh, microzoids, uh, all these different. So excuse me, Doctor. Sorry? Excuse me, Doctor Sadikun Awa. Five more minutes for your presentation, please. Ah, thank you. So good. Okay, thank you. Uh, biochemical composition of uh, H. pluvialis. As I said, it has got high amount of nutrients, uh, uh, you know. Uh, protein, uh, lipid, uh, all these things. Uh, cultivation, cultivation is not that uh, difficult. All you need, uh, light shirts, uh, light shirts. Uh, you can grow it uh, the, at home, indoor, outdoor, lab, out, lab and uh, in the uh, field. Just you need light, uh, sorry, you need uh, light uh, and some kind of uh, nutrient. Also, uh, in the in the industry, this is industrial scale. You can grow in the raceway, or you can grow, grow using the uh, photobioreactor. That's been more uh, popular. And you see, they grow in two phases. One is green phase, another one is uh, red phase. But same same algae. When they turn red phase, they just separate. This red phase only for astrazeneca pigment collection. This green phase for another purpose. Eventually, the green phase will turn to uh, red phase. How can you harvest? You know, there are different type of harvesting techniques. You can use a mechanical, a mechani a mechanical system, chemical system, or biological system. And a drying, same. You can use, um, you know, a spray dryer, a drum dryer, sun drying system. So this is my one of the most important uh, slides. So H. fluvialis is the same algae, one, one, one species of algae. This is the culture procedure, harvesting. Another good thing, because we can recycle this water. During the harvesting, we can, sorry, during the harvesting, we can recycle the water. You can recycle the water. We are not wasting water as well. And here, after the cultivation, harvesting, then drying, then cell disruption, because you have to disrupt, break the cell, and extraction, you see, from here. If you want, you can uh, extract biofuel. If you want, uh, you can uh, extract astrazenthine. It's still, you'll have cake, you'll have a flake, you'll have uh, other uh, biomass, residual biomass. These residual biomass, you can use as animal food, fertilizer, cell and soil reclamation. And another example here also, Dunaliela uh, 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 salina. This is a fertilizer, this biomass. So this is, as I said, using the Dunaliela salina, we can, we can reclaim, we can reclaim uh, sal uh, you know, salinity problem of soil. So how can you grow them? Uh, as I said, even uh, in your backyard, it's not expensive. This is, you can make your own photobioreactor. You can go like, this is a simple plastic uh, bottle. You just need a light source and very tiny little aerator, that's it. You can make, just grow in, uh, say for example, one liter or three liter bottle. That will be enough algae for your face mask, for your beauty product per week or, uh, you know, 
if you want to, if you even you can uh, drink uh, algae if the water is uh, pure. You can drink algae. That's been coming in the market with algal soup. Uh, <clears throat> so even if you have hanging line in your backyard, you know, cloth, uh, clothing line, you can grow algae and just uh, hanging all these kind of bags. So to grow algae, you don't need any extra uh, spaces. You can grow it in uh, your backyard. Many countries in, uh, Asia, in Asia, they are growing algae in their backyard, on the rooftop, just in the balcony, just for their own consumption. So microalgae uh, clearly show potential to move the uh, meet the population's need and reason. But one thing we have to do that we have to promote it. There are many people they don't understand the importance of algae. What algae could do in future, and you know, as I said, this is my another topic. You know, if you have this biomass, this is algal biomass. This is algal biomass. This is algal biomass. If you this algal biomass ready, this is up to your decision what you want to do. You can make so many things. Okay, you don't have to put, uh, if you don't want to use for cosmetics, for animal feed, uh, or for uh, uh, your consumption, put it into your uh, land. Just fertilize your land. Our land productivity. Our land, our natural own productivity, losing day by day by day by day. Whatever the crop production we are gaining now, that because of application of fertilizer. If, say, for example, if mother is sick, mother is infected with HIV, how can you expect healthy baby? Our whole planet, our this mother nature, nature becoming sick day by day by day by day. That's why we are now having. Corona. We are now having, uh, you know, uh, COVID nineteen, and I don't know what will, will happen in future because our mother planet becoming sick day by day by day because of our indiscriminate uses. So we have to bring back. We have to make our mother nature, our planet, healthy first, and it's very easy. We can do this by using the algae by treating them our mother nature, uh, you know, uh, with algal, uh, algal uh, technology, we can make this planet healthy. Then there are many problems will be solved. That anyway, uh, within the short time of here, uh, I wanted to show you, especially uh, the contribution of algae in so many new fields in the near future. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for your patience and uh, listening nearly, I don't know how long I talk, uh, nearly yes. 30 minutes or 40 minutes. It's not that okay. easy. And I'm really overwhelmed and really over the moon to see that 930 participants actually listening my this lecture. Thank you so much for giving me this yes. opportunity. Thank you very much, Beck, for your uh, your interesting and then very useful information for all of us and for all participants in here. Uh, before we start discussing uh, for the answer all of the question, we would like to take a photo first, Doctor Awal. Please let us and organizing committee uh, take all a photo for all of participant. Please open the camera for for all of you okay okay uh, okay thank you Ms. mrs ernie ladies and yes. gentlemen i will take uh maybe only five slides because a lot of slides in here please giving your best smile let me start first slide second slide Third slide, fourth slide, and fifth slide. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, one more uh, before we start again to the the main agenda for the uh, discussion. Okay. 
uh, we would like to show the second uh, summer course uh, for the even all of the activity uh, during uh, the second summer course uh, start in uh, 21st July. Uh, please, uh, you can enjoy watching the video. Thank you. delighted to offer an endorsement for the upcoming summer course being organised by the College of Vocational Studies at Bebe University. My name is John Ingram, I lead the Food Systems Transformation Research Team in the University of Oxford and I've had the pleasure of working with Bebe over a number of years on a variety of topics. Summer courses are an excellent opportunity to learn but also to broaden your network of contacts and to establish firm collaborations across the region. I thoroughly endorse the course and I look forward to hearing its outcomes. Thank you. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honourable Rector and the Dean of Professional Study, IPB University, and also all of the participants. My name is Dr. Idegri Arsanti, the Director of the Innocent Centre for Agricultural Education. It's a pleasure that I could participate in this event and for the support of the summer course, the third international summer course on sustainability of tropical animal production that bring the tema creating innovation of animal production sector in the new normal era. It is very fit with nowadays condition that we face several challenges uh, in this year because uh, this summer course will bring the new and wide horizon of knowledge and perspective and also experience of the student with having and bring the international lecturer, international professional and also stakeholders together in this event. Hope it will give the new benefit of our students in order to increase their competencies and also all participants join in this event. Good luck. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you very much for the video. Let's move on to the next agenda. Uh, may I have your attention, please, for all participants? Are you still here with us? I hope so. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will read some or several questions from all of the participants. And uh, Dr. Awal will elaborate for the answer. And then first question is, there are so many questions, Dr. Sharikun Awal. So, wait, just a second. Okay. Uh, for the first question from uh, from the basic uh, question from Sylvia Sitompo, what is the real microalgae? And what uh, from Ikhtiara, what is the step and strategy and government policy in uh, using of microalgae and if in the abuse of agriculture resorts? It, this is the uh, uh, the first question. Uh, okay, Dr. Sadiqul Awal, please. Yes, so uh, real microalgae, real my sorry, I'm not clear about the question, but I explain. There are actually three types of algae, algae. In algae, algae, they grow in water. Right. The green, green layer. Uh, that we see in the water. So normally there are three types of algae. One is called kelp or seaweed, mm -hmm. macroalgae, microalgae, then nanoalgae. Micro means which you cannot see by your eye. You have to look under the microscope. That is microalgae. Anyway, <clears throat> the whatever the green thing that you see in the water, that's microalgae. That's algae. You know that we get oxygen, we, we, we breathe oxygen, and uh, we know that plants supply us oxygen, but do you know that majority of the oxygen, you know, into which we breathe and survive coming from the sea, and that microalgae produces oxygen in the sea, and that oxygen actually coming to our terrestrial environment. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> For the next question, uh, uh, what is the step and your strategy to uh, and also the government policy if there is abuse of agriculture resources? Do you understand what this question? No, I understand, but yeah, yeah, I understand what he wants. So it depends on which government, which country. I'm actually trying to promote uh, use of algae uh, globally, worldwide, you know. Why? Because, sorry, I'll just take a little bit longer. Maybe I have to cut a uh, question uh, for, uh, from other participants. We are now scared about COVID, Corona, you know, mm -hmm. I know in Indonesia globally, it's now a terrible situation. Why we are so mm -hmm. much afraid, panicked about Corona? Because the way patient actually dying because of lung problem, come not even at the last moment, the patient tried to take even tiny little oxygen. But think about this, you know, that uh, our global situation, our environment becoming less oxygen day by day by day by day. Oxygen actually uh, reducing from our whole planet. You know, there are so many reasons. So therefore, therefore if we don't, uh, you know, Look, but by using the algae, we can fix that problem. By using the uh, algae, we can uh, fix the problem now. Forget about, as I said, why should, if we have this natural thing, why should we use all the synthetic one? Why should we use synthetic astrazentin, synthetic, uh, you know, uh, you know, beta carotene, and there, there are so other things. More algae you will grow. You'll get more oxygen. Plus, you'll have uh, biomass. Then you can ask me what you'll uh, do with biomass. That's up to you. What you want. So, <clears throat> the government policy in in many countries, government uh, investing billions of dollars. This is not only a uh, story. You know, 
as I said, uh, cosmetic industry, they're not a many oil companies, petroleum companies. They are doing huge research on it. Uh, cosmetics company, as I said, uh, you know, doing huge recycling company. Nowadays, many uh, people making, uh, you know, plastic products using algae. So, depending on which country, with, and there is no abuse, no abuse of algae. Rather, we have misconception, no abuse. Rather, we have, it, you know, you grow more algae, it doesn't matter. It will be benefited for your environment. If you have algae, just put into your land. You don't have to apply a urea fertilizer, you know, you just apply and that will boost up your natural productivity. So there is no abuse. Rather, we have misconception. As I said, many mm -hmm. people say, oh, that yucky, you know, scum. So we have to understand about the potential. Okay. All right. Excuse uh, me, so Mrs. We Yes. We have our student here, Nurul Masjita from SVIPB, uh, Aquaculture Study Program, and she wanted to ask a question. I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh, okay. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, please deliver the question. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, before, uh, from Ernie. Uh, is it my voice clear? Yes. Uh, clear? Not very clear. So you can tell oh, her. Sorry. And then he, she can actually uh, transfer, uh, you know, pass to me, because yeah, I think some I'm having some problem from your speaker, but I'll try to listen in here. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, thanks a lot for your great presentation, Dr. Sadikul Awal. So uh, I have read that omega trees contained in fish is the result of the accumulation of microalgae eaten by fish itself. In other words, microalgae is the big omega-3 supplier for fish. Uh, however, uh, my question is, however, why until now most people still claim that fish is the best source of omega-3 than microalgae? And why don't most people uh, not use microalgae directly to get uh, this omega-3 itself? And in your opinion, what obstacles and challenges are still often encountered in the use of microalgae as alternative food to get uh, omega-3? And what is the simple things for us as a generation to start using microalgae, microalgae optimally in our daily life? Uh, I think that's all. Is it clear, doctor? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, later, I, I think last, uh, towards the last uh, part of question, I didn't hear this clearly, but, but I, I, I guess something. Okay, you said that why, because this is like, we prefer to eat fish rather than plant material. So whatever, whatever omega-3 we are eating, uh, you know, uh, from fish, it's coming from fish exclusively from uh, uh, sorry, it, it exclusively coming from algae. But, you know, as we said, we have misconception about uh, eating algae, how we eat algae. You know, in many Western countries, uh, the health professionals, mm -hmm. they don't advise pregnant women to eat fish as, uh, no, sorry, to eat uh, fish oil, especially, and not daily fish, because nowadays, especially bigger fish, they accumulate many contaminant toxic products. But if you take directly algae, or take directly algae, like algal capsule, algal tablet, there is no chance of getting contamination, because fish tissue, fish body accumulate many toxic metals. But algae not. Algae, if you take from the algae, you'll get pure uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acid. So omega-3, think about uh, all those animals living in Arctic, Antarctic, you know, their, their body full of omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid, they eat exclusively on, uh, you know, algae, algae-rich, uh, like uh, blue whale, they eat krill, tiny little shrimp. That krill exclusively 
live on algae diatom, which is full of uh, fatty acid. But here is my another question. Like uh, we talk about sustainability, sustainable uh, preservation, conservation of animal. We want to protect a blue whale. At the same time, we are killing, we are harvesting krill. Have you heard about krill? You know, in the market now, you can buy fish oil, not, not fish oil, krill oil. We, they claim it's a very rich in omega-3 fatty acid. So we want to protect oil. At the same time, we are killing, harvesting krill. Then how can we protect uh, blue whale? Because krill is the only food for blue whale. So all this will we have to be, grow our awareness. This is all regarding our awareness. In a long time before, in many Asian countries, they never used soybean uh, vegetable, uh, soybean uh, cooking oil, you know, in especially in a uh, subcontinent. But uh, now they've been using, uh, so, you know, many different type of vegetable uh, cooking oil. So all these are actually perception. Proof. We have to grow our awareness. That, that I want to say. That's why we need, have to promote the huge potential of algae. You know that now scientists thinking to make smaller microchips from algal cell, computer chips from algal cell. So where it's going now. So, but we don't know much because of maybe my, you know, all this awareness, our knowledge not that disseminated as it should be. Okay. Okay. Okay, doctor. Yeah. I nice. think I got the point. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Awa. For the next question, I will uh, read the question. Uh, wait a second. Okay. This question from the uh, Naila. Uh, he would like to know the side effect of using spirulina for weight loss and other new new nutraceutical product. Good, good, Please, good, good question. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for asking me yes. this question. Side effect. Even if you eat too much spinach in one sitting, if you eat too much spinach. You may get some kind of, you know, intestinal problem like diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, all these things. So you have to get used to slowly, slowly. Just whatever you take, take uh, adequate amount. Sometimes people, yeah, you're right, by taking sp spirulina and chlorella, they get some kind of uh, indigestion. It has got no other problem, but especially related to bolting, you know, kind of indigestion. But if on the first day I take two, three tablets together, so that definitely will not be good. We have to get used to it. As I showed you, I don't know whether you can remember it or not. Chlorella has got thick cell wall, which it has got a strong fiber all around, same as spirulina. So if you want to take spirulina or chlorella as your uh, health supplement, just try, you know, try to get uh, used to slowly, but don't take much. Another thing, spirulina and chlorella, they are good for fiber supplement, but astaxanthin, beta carotene, they are good for, uh, you know, omega-3 fatty acid. So for uh, uh, spirulina and uh, chlorella, if you want to add dietary, dietary or fiber, fiber in your uh, diet and protein, mm -hmm. that's good. But for, uh, you know, your uh, omega-3 component, lipid component, uh, astaxanthin, especially hematococcus, Dunalial or some other kind of algal supplement, very good. Okay. And also, just I give you another tip. 
I do so many experiments, I just apply on my body, you know, because no one volunteered me. I asked once, I, I made long time before, I formulated, you know, hair oil using algae. I asked my wife and daughter, can we just uh, use in your hair? They said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. But I use it on my head. Anyway, so I am trying to, uh, you know, formulate some kind of face mask just using simple, simple algae, then I'll apply on my body. So maybe one year later, I'll show you my face. That's what I haven't started yet. So I'm giving you the tip, just use uh, spirulina and uh, chlorella. These two very good for you know, face mask. And if you can mm -hmm. add with uh, chlorella, with asters and thing, because that will add up your uh, uh, essential fatty acid. So if you if you know a little bit chemistry, you know it's not that hard to understand the benefit of all these you know wonderful natural products. Okay, uh, for the next question, uh, wait a second. For the next question is uh, talking related to asta something benefit this is question from andini puspita and from i dr sadikun awal mm -hmm. uh, speaking about astasantin uh, this uh, micro lg has a benefit uh, of antioxidant very high right for the mark uh, for the several condition in degeneration problem is this correct mm -hmm. and sorry, then, sorry. yeah astasantin has a benefit for uh, antioxidant Right, yeah. and then my question and Andini Puspita uh, believe that uh, reduction mm -hmm. antioxidant think the astaxanthin will increase. Uh, uh, I mean, will prevent from the muscle or from the degeneration problem for the elderly people. Uh, is there any preview study that mentioned about? Uh, degenerative disease uh, can be prevented by astaxanthin. Could you uh, please elaborate for this question? Thank you. Thank you so much. Just ask, uh, yes. you know, astaxanthin, just for your kind information. Astaxanthin actually a pigment, mm -mm. not uh, microalgae. It remains in different microalgae. The most, uh, so far, you know, how many algae you know so far? Not many. You know, in the marine environment, so far, 90% of the organism is still unidentified. We don't know. We only know 10% biodiversity in the marine environment. Anyway, so as so far, we have been found that uh, hematococcus pluvialis, that is special algae, freshwater algae, mm -hmm. they have a rich uh, astrazenthin, a pigment. Just remember, in normal situation, estrogen is you can't see. So whenever any organism, any plant, any algae changes color, shows morphism, means one state to another because of environmental situation and birth situation. That is, uh, you know, that is kind of polymorphism, and they develop some kind of special pigment. That is astaxanthin is a special pigment. It actually develops from green chloroplast to astaxanthin. So astaxanthin benefits. It has got, still, you know, it's not very old area. It's a recent uh, finding. You'll find in medical journal, in a nutraceutical journal, there are amazing, amazing news of astaxanthin. It, it has got, uh, you know, cell regenerative uh, capacity. So far it says, even, you know, uh, different type of a neurological problem could be, mm -hmm. could be, you know, especially neurological studies, it takes long time, Alzheimer's disease and uh, dementia, because it, so far it's been shown that it can regenerate not cell. Okay, so if can if it can regenerate nerve cells, then definitely it will take a bit, uh, you know, time to know exactly what estrogen uh, do. 
So all these, uh, the benefit so far was uh, not very known to us. This is actually new areas. It has got okay. uh, not regenerative. It has got, uh, you know, anti-cancerous pro properties. It has, even it can, it, it has got a uh, huge uh, role in our cardiovascular diseases. So that means it it uh, it uh, increases the elasticity. What they call it, you know, for the time being, when uh, body grow become uh, you know, old, the, the uh, arteries then become some kind of sclerosis, like plaque inside wall. So this astaxanthin or this kind of pigment prevent those uh, uh, fibrosis or sclerosis or uh, plucking inside the vein. So definitely there will be some uh, result uh, in a medicine because worldwide in the medical science and the, these areas, huge research now uh, going on. So, so far it hasn't got, we haven't found any bad uh, impact of this estrogen thing, rather, uh, you know, uh, beneficial. And that's why one kilogram of pure estrogen thing, you know how much, if it is from hematococcus pluralis, it's from ten thousand to fifteen thousand dollar one kilogram of pure estrazanthin. So if it did, if it didn't have that benefit in that much expensive, wow, like if it if you can extract pure beta carotene from dunaliella salina, more or less uh, seven to eight uh, ten thousand dollars per kilogram. So oh, okay. you see, you can imagine that what would be the industry in terms of money in future. Okay, I guess we reach to the last question. Yeah, that uh, would be from, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the last question, Dr. Awa. Uh, about, uh, talking about spirulina uh, has been also used for the skin be skin beauty. Uh, would you explain uh, what is the effect for the skin of the spirulina? Is uh, increased the collagen or what else? Dr. Sadikun, could you explain for this? Spirulina. Yeah, yeah, that I don't know exactly what the effect is on our, uh, you know, on our darm, on our epidermis, but uh, so far, I think it has got uh, whatever the so uh, you know uh, lipid or uh, fatty acid. The main function here fatty acid. Those fatty acid, especially and it is oily, you know, fatty acid. I think uh, linoleic, linoleic, and palmic, palmic, palmic acid. Uh, yeah, yeah, palmic yeah, acid. All these, uh, yeah, palmic acid. All these actually would uh, huge impact on our skin, but especially whether it affect on our tissue or on our collagen, that I actually don't know. But oh, as okay. I said, uh, instead of, instead of uh, spirulina, they are now looking at more marine algae for their, uh, you know, dermatological and uh, beauty product because Spirulina chlorella is excellent algae, but their outer cell, which is the skin, is very thick, double well. So, and it's not, uh, sometimes a bit uh, difficult to break it down, you know? So therefore it's switching towards like, uh, like, like, as I said, uh, hematococcus is very easy to break down the cell, and many other, many other, just in general, marine algae, it has got thin cell wall, so therefore many people, and marine algae has got more uh, carotene, more estrogenty, uh, more, uh, you know, yeah. fatty acid than freshwater yes. algae, therefore many people now switching from freshwater algae, algae to uh, marine algae. Okay. And as oh, I said, okay. sorry, uh, all this uh, research is still, uh, you know, uh, not very old. So there are so many answers that will come. 
uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, after uh, research. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your uh, explanation of all of the question, Dr. Sadikun Awa. Uh, mm -hmm. We would like to say thank you very much also for all participants still stay with us until the end of the discussion. And uh, for the key certificate, there is some information uh, I will uh, send to after uh, send to all the participants after Q and A discussion after uh, finish of this uh, event, and also we would like to ask Dr. Sadikul Awal, uh, could you give us the closing statement of your talk, Dr. Sadikul Awal? <clears throat> yeah, that uh, LG. <clears throat> I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. In simply, in simple statement, I can say, if I ask, can we change the words productivity? I can say, yes, we can, by using LG. If you have LG, alcohol technology can do so many things. In it. It, it can bring our unproductive land into productive world. You can, it can bring the main concept of sustainability sustainable development practice into the agricultural farm, into animal farm, into aquaculture farm. Whatever we are saying now is still in paperwork. It's still in paperwork. That's not happening in fact, really speaking. Like it's still we are killing, uh, you know, fish for, to make animal feed. Fish meal, we are using fish meal for uh, fish, for other things. Uh, and as I said, we are still killing krill uh, for our omega-3 fatty acid or lipid, but then how can we save uh, well? So truly speaking, if we actually practice or introduce algae in so many areas, so algae can bring the true sustainable practice, especially in primary industry, including, including, uh, you know, uh, enhancement of unproductive land topsoil into the productive land. okay okay ladies and gentlemen uh, we have a uh, risk at the end of this uh, general lecture and we would like to thank you thank you very much and appreciate for dr sadikul awa has joined with us for the general lecture and also and i am on behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to apologize if there is a lack information delivered for you all of the answer. Okay, and then uh, thank you again for all the participants. We close for this uh, today uh, general election and uh, for the certificate for all of the participants. Uh, we'll send uh, to the I guess to the email of each participant. Uh, for this, uh, we close for the general lecture of the second summer course of uh, a vocational study in 2021. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Sadiq Thank Kaupa. you so much. Yes. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Sadikul. Ya. Yeah. Uh, Mbak, itu uh, sertifikatnya gimana? Send ke email masing-masing kan ya? Oke. Kenapa, Bu? Sertifikatnya di send ke email kan, Mbak? Iya. Yeah. Iya, yeah, oke, okay, thank you. Iya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Untuk sertifikat bisa dilihat di kolom chat. Ada dua link. Link yang pertama oh. adalah untuk form mengisi form sertifikat oh, ada dengan ya. Google Form, lalu akan diterima email secara otomatis ke email masing-masing yang didaftarkan. Mohon agar email yang ditulis adalah benar adanya, tidak salah typo, sehingga bisa sampai emailnya. Uh, Oke. Okay. Setiap email yeah. hanya bisa mengisi satu kali, dan jika... Karena uh, begitu tinggi aktivitas sehingga emailnya tertunda, bisa dilihat 
sertifikatnya di link yang kedua. Itu merupakan Google Drive untuk uh, bank sertifikat. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, uh, there is a question from Steph. Wait a second. Ya, yeah. ada question dari mana ya? Ada pertanyaan, uh, begitu banyak orangnya. Oke, okay, uh, all participant please uh, look at the uh, address for the uh, for fill uh, untuk mengisi ya, yeah? untuk mengisi uh, sertifikat. Jangan sampai salah, ada alamat-alamatnya. Nanti akan dikirim kurang lebih uh, kalau tidak segera tujuh hari uh, setelah uh, apa uh, ini general lecture ini. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bu Erni. Uh, peserta ya, yang hadir, jika nanti sertifikatnya belum langsung diterima, mohon ditunggu sampai sore. Jika belum lagi, uh, ditunggu besok pagi dengan pengisian yang sama. Khawatirnya oh, servernya, ya. Uh, <laughs> saya kira tujuh hari sih, setelah ini bisa tujuh hari. hari. Langsung oh, Bu, okay. dapat, dapat sertifikatnya langsung. Hanya saja oh, khawatirnya tujuh ya, hari. <laughs> <laughs> Oke. Okay. Langsung kita jendela otomatis. Khawatir nanti servernya sedang uh, crowded. Ya, diulangi lagi keesokan harinya. Terima kasih para peserta semuanya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih uh, banyak Bu Erni. Luar biasa. Excellent banget. Aduh, <laughs> Sangat lancar.